trading at its best. I am Mike Swanson, founder of, uh, of TradeWest Forex. We've created a lot of systems you might have seen in the past. Um, been trading for nine and a half years, teaching traders for about five of those years. So that's just a quick little information about how long we've been in this. And we started this, these weekly trainings just a few months ago. And we also had a, a Forex 101 series. For those of you that are brand new to Forex, you might want to review those. Just type in the chat if you would like to see, you know, like how to, how, how to calculate a PIP, margins, leverage, you know, how to use MetaTrader and trading platforms, all the basics. We've already covered those in, in a whole different series that we did earlier this year. So we can get you those links. But today we're going to be talking about something that's kind of basic to some of you and um, it might be review for some of you, but I'm going to cover some angles that I think are going to, going to appeal to everybody. So let's go ahead and take a look at what, what we're going to be talking about here today. How to calculate lot size. Okay, really basic concept for, for those that have been trading a while, but it's extremely important. It, you know, it's one of the most important parts of money management. And, you know, I think that the reason most people lose so much money is because they are over leveraging their accounts. They don't know, you know, they don't really know how much they should be trading and, you know, how many lots they should be trading. I had a comment come in last week in one of our webinars that got me thinking about this. You know, one of our, you know, one of the people that attended said, um, you know, they were looking at a, a daily chart and then they were looking at their five minute chart and thinking that you calculate your lot size exactly the same in both cases and that's completely not the, not true and I'm going to explain how what you know what I'm talking about here in just a few minutes so we'll be talking about how much money you should risk on a trade so that kind of is going to answer that question should you be risking the same amount of money on a five minute chart as you would on a daily chart some of you might think oh no but you don't know why so I'm going to get into those details and then why a stop loss is so important so I'm going to cover, you know, why if you if you plan to have a stop loss, which everybody should, I mean, you don't have to put it on your order. You can have a stealth mode, stop loss, whatever. It's just you should always know where you will close the trade if you were wrong. So you always need to have that ahead of time. And we're going to also talk about why that's so important when it comes back to looking at money management. And then we're going to look at the simple formula for calculating your lot size. Now I've got some tools I've created in the past with my other company, Forex Decoder, and uh, we've built a lot size calculator and all kinds of things. Um, but today I'm going to talk about just a simple formula that everybody can use with any style of trading system. Okay, so does that sound good? Everybody excited to to learn some of these things that I think I know they're going to help you tremendously if you just you know apply them to your trading. Don't just come into these things and listen and then go on throughout the week and continue doing, you know, trading the way you always do, just take, you know, just take, even just open up a little demo account and try some of this stuff. I've had a, we've had a lot of success from these webinars in the past. We've had people come into our, you know, our Friday training series. We usually do these on Friday, by the way. Um, occasionally we'll do Mondays if we have things, too many things going on through the week. But, um, We've had people come into these sessions and come back the next day and say, man, I just made 200 pips off of this trading strategy you taught me for free. So, I mean, the stuff works that I'm teaching. I'm not just out there, you know, throwing out the same things that everybody else teaches. So, and I think those, those you know, the half of you that have come before, you're back because you realize that. You know that these things can help you a lot. So, Let's go ahead and what I like to do is bring up some charts just so we can, you know, talk about the charts a little bit while we cover how much money you should be risking and compare, you know, the lower time frames to the higher time frames. So let's bring up my charts here for you guys. I'll take you just one second here. Just clear off a nice clean chart. Okay. Is everybody seeing this chart okay? 
we've got a just a euro dollar chart up on the hourly okay everything's good there so so here I'm just on the hourly chart I really consider the lower time frames to be anything less than the daily I mean even the four hour doesn't quite compare to the daily so I'm going to be looking at if you're trading anything anything that allows you to really day trade I'm going to put the you know put it into two different groups here you've got the day traders that are focusing on you know four hour all the way down to the one minute charts those are the day traders that are getting in and out throughout the day they are going to have a completely different way of looking at risk than a longer term trader who's on the daily charts you know in the last couple sessions I've been talking a lot about most of you should start focusing on the daily charts you know become a successful trader there first before you you know mess around with the other time frames if you're bored and you need something to do practice just simulating trading on the dailies but anyways we'll stick on, stay on topic here with lot size is what we're talking about today so so those that are on the daily charts are going to more than likely put more risk on per trade than somebody who's on five-minute, fifteen-minute hourly charts. Now, some of you don't think that you, have, you know haven't realized that that's what you should be doing. So, when there are people out there teaching, hey, risk, you should be risking two percent per trade. How many of you have heard that? Have been taught that that you should be risking two percent, no more than two percent per trade or so. One or two percent, sometimes three. Some people teach it a little differently. Okay. Yep, I got a bunch of you saying, yep, that's you. You've heard it. Glenn says up to five percent. Okay. Well, here's the thing. Most of the people that's, that are teaching that, I guess those that started it really, they are usually trading off of the higher time frames, the daily charts. They're longer term traders. Okay, so that means if you're going down to trade these lower time frames, that's probably way too much risk um, for, the, for an average day trader. Because think about this. Some of you have probably seen this where your accounts have gotten to a pretty heavy, you know, steep drawdown, even with the 2 or 3% risk, or even 5%, like Glenn says. Okay, here's why. When you're on, say, 15-minute chart, how many different setups are you going to take in a single day? You know, how many more whipsaws, news events, and things are you going to get caught in to where, you know, you might have a really bad day and have three or four or five losing trades in a, in a single day or a single week? That's much more likely to happen on a lower time frame. And that's, you know, that's why what I suggest tr day traders do is scale that risk down even further. Two to three or five percent is way too much risk for a day trader because there's just so much more volatility and whipsaws and um, the news events that can, you know, that can get in there and hammer you on, you know, in a single trade. And so you need to, if you're going to be day trading, you need to cut that risk down, you know, half or less than what you've been you've been taught. Okay, so if I'm on the daily charts, you'll see that things, you know, that I'm not going to be affected by the news events as much. You know, if, a, if the news moves the market 100 pips, it's not going to affect my daily charts nearly as much as, say, a 15-minute trader. So my, you know, my risk is, you know, I can increase my risk per trade. It also means that I'm not going to be taking, you know, I'm not going to be taking 100 trades a month, you know, where I could have, you know, in the, in those hundred trades in a single month, I could have five losses in a row. It can it happens. A lot of you have probably experienced that, or even more. And if you have five or so, per, you know, two to five percent risk per trade, that's going to put you in a bad drawdown in a short period of time. Does that make sense? So you need that's the first thing you need to look at is we're trying to determine how much you should be risking per trade, how much of your account. So if you're day trading, I would say. Take that two to three percent and and you know cut that in half, maybe even more. You might even want to go a third, you know, trade a half a percent to one percent risk per trade. Okay, so now the next thing you have to figure out here is how many trades are you going to take at once? If you're going to hold ten to fifteen trades at once, that's not going to work for you either. You're going to need to divide that risk out. Okay, so if I'm going to risk say two two or three percent on my trades um, 
I'm going to be looking at, I'm only going to take two or three, you know, one or two or three trades at once. So I'm probably not going to want to put on more than a total risk of maybe five or six percent. So you kind of need to have a max risk, you know, max cumulative risk, all at, you know, what you're going to have open all at once as well here. So if you're day trading and you're going to have five or six trades on at once, you need to put a cap on the daily risk you're putting on. So if we're saying, okay, you're going to do um, a half a percent risk on a daily trade, you should probably have no more than one or two percent total risk between all your positions at once. That way, if you have a couple bad days, you're not blowing up your account or getting into margin call issues and things like that. Okay. So yeah, I am, uh, have a question about where we're located, what time zone we're in. We're in mountain time. So we're one hour ahead of Pacific time. Okay, so yeah, it's it's um, it's 12:22 p.m. right now. Okay, so hopefully that that makes some sense. I I know it's uh, a lot of people aren't really teaching you this part of it. If, you know, how do you determine how much you should risk? Everybody just says you should risk no more than two percent or five percent. When really that's re that's very dangerous for a day trader. And some of you, are, like I said, are wondering why do you, why are you getting into really bad situations with your account when you're following those rules? Okay, well that's when the second part comes in here. So the next part is, if we go back over here. Okay, so now that you got an idea how much money you should be risking on a trade, um, you know you'll take your balance. Say you have ten thousand dollars, and you determine you're going to risk one percent. Well, that's going to be a hundred dollars. Okay, so once you've figured that out, the way we get down to this formula is there's another step here. We have to figure out um, the stop loss. So let's talk about the stop loss and why that's so important in all this. Okay, so some people believe that a bigger stop loss means you have to risk more money. Is that what some of you still think? I mean, do you think that if I have to have a 500 pip stop and you only need a 50 pip stop that you're going to be risking less than me? Okay, well, let's take a look at this concept. Okay, if I go on my chart, let's say I'm, um, I'm buying right here. doesn't matter where. I'm just going to say I bought right here. And let's say it's 3,500 to keep it easy there. 3,500. And let's say I need to have a stop loss at 3,400, just 100 pips. Okay, so somewhere right in there. And let's say I put my target at 3650, 150 pips. I can't really get that right on, but you guys follow me, right? 100 pip stop for 150 pip target. Okay, if I were to go do this same thing down here on a another lower time frame and just divide everything by 10. So let's say I only had to have a 10 pip stop for a 15 pip target. Follow me? Does that does has anything changed here? Am, am I going to be? Do I have to risk more money on this trade or on the day trade, or am I going to make more money or less money? Okay, this is what we're going to lead into is the formula here. But the answer is it will be exactly the same, whether I have to risk 10 pips to make 15, or risk 100 to make 150. In both cases, I'm risking the same amount of money to make the same amount of profit. This is this kind of covers a little bit about risk to reward ratio, but we're going to stay on. We're going to stick with just why this applies to lot size, and the reason I'm showing you this is because you need to determine your stop loss. You know, so don't look at your trades as I have to have um, an ultra small, tiny stop loss. So therefore, I need I should go trade the five minute charts. Um, you know, I, I know this is why a lot of you avoid the daily charts because you look on here and you see that these moves. Or 400, 500 pips, and you're thinking, I probably have to have a 200, you know, 100, 200, 300 pip stop on this trade, and you're thinking, I can't afford to risk that. Well, once you see this formula here today, you're going to see that that doesn't really matter. You know, it's fine to have a larger stop loss. What you don't want to be doing is, you know, putting in a 300 pip stop to make 20 or 30 pips. That's when you. That's what you probably are. Uh, you know, that's probably what you've heard out there, but you're, 
but most traders are looking at it as, oh, it's the big stop loss that's bad. I need to shrink that. No, it's, it's that you need to increase your target size if you're on a daily chart like this. Of course, you don't want to go down to a 15-minute chart and put in a 300 pip stop. You're not, you should never need that size of a stop on a lower time frame like that. Okay, so let's keep moving here. So we need to determine our stop loss on the trade. Now, some people say, I don't use stop losses. Well, you should still know exactly where you will close the trade if the market goes to that point. Maybe you don't physically go put the stop loss in on your trade, but you should at least put a line on your chart or a mental note of exactly where you will, without a doubt, close the trade at that point. Okay, now the reason that's so important here is because this stop loss is going to determine how much you're going to lose on the trade. So if you said 2% or 1%, wherever you put the stop means you lose 1%. So that means if the market goes beyond that and you let it keep going, you're going to lose more than 1%. That's why it's so important that you determine where you're, will, you're willing to take a loss and that you follow the rules and you follow your plan. Okay, let me give you an example here of what a lot of traders do. Okay, let's just uh, clear off some of these lines here. Okay, a lot of traders will go in and they'll go short. You know, they'll go short down in here somewhere. They'll say, okay, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to put a 100 pip stop in or whatever right here. And I will say not. Let's just say it's somewhere right in there. Okay. Let's see here. Okay. So as you can see here, the market moved in their favor, and they thought, "Man, I've got a good trade going here." Let's say they didn't get out. They thought it was going to keep going, and it turned against them. So they had their stop loss planned right here, or it was a mental stop loss, whatever it was. They said, "If it goes to here, I'm going to close it out." Well, when it went to there. They said, man, I think it's going to turn back down. And they watch, okay, it's going down. I'm not going to close this out. Let me zoom in on this a bit. Okay, they're right here thinking, right in here, where the market shows signs of going down. They feel like it's going to head down. So they, don't, they either move their stops a little bit, and they say, okay, I'm going to give it some room here. It's probably going to turn. Well, when it doesn't and it goes up, they either continue to move their stops, or if it's a mental stop, they just keep watching the market, hoping it's going to turn down. Now here's the problem with that. When you make your lot size calculation here initially, this means that if you risk, say, 1%, $10,000 account, doesn't matter what it is, 1% uh, means if it goes here, you lose 1%. So what does that mean if you start moving it? Okay, well, if, it, if you move it, if say if you move it up to here, now you're lo gonna lose 2%. Okay, you move it up to here, you're losing three. Follow me on this? So you see, if you keep letting it move against you, you went against your initial plan of keeping your risk at 1%. You'd be risking 3, 4, 5, all the way up. Okay? So that's why you need to stick with your plan. And on top of that, say if you're risking 5%, you can obviously see how bad that could get. And that's why a lot of people run into margin calls, and if they have a couple trades on and they're doing this, they, you know, they lose a lot of money in a short period of time. So the goal is figure out your stop loss. Don't worry if it has to be a bigger stop. You know, that stuff will just come back to risk to reward ratio. If you need to have a stop way out here, just you're going to do the math. I'm going to show you that equation here in a second. And calculate your lot size. Even if your stop's way out here, you can calculate it so that you only risk 1%. Okay? So let's, let's show you how you do that now. Okay. So here's the formula. There's a couple different phases to get to this to count the lot size. So let's start with first you have to calculate your dollars to risk. So we've talked about you take your account balance times it by your risk percent. That's going to figure out how many dollars you're going to lose if you hit your stop or your where you're going to close the trade. Okay? Then you're, that's going to give you your uh, next you're going to get need to get your risk per pip. So this will be take you'll take that dollars to risk number you're going to divide that by your stop loss pips. Okay, now let me let me give you a quick note here. When I'm looking at the pips, let me go back to my chart here. I'm looking at it as let's say if we're on the euro dollar, even though a lot of brokers are quoting a fifth digit now, that fifth digit is not a full pip, that's a tenth of a pip. 
So we're looking at a, a PIP is the fourth digit. Or if you're on, say, the USEN, it's the second digit. We're not going to use that last digit on these you know, three and five digit brokers because those are just tenths that recently got introduced to the market a couple years ago. Okay, so with that in mind, make, you know, make sure you're calculating your stop loss pips as a full pip. Okay, so take your dollars to risk divided by your pips that your stop is, and that gives you your risk per pip that you can allow. Then to get your lot size, you're going to take your risk per pip divided by 10. And the reason we're divided by 10 is because I'm looking at it as you have a standard account, just a standard sized account where a lot, 1.0 lots is $10 per pip and 0.1 lots is a dollar per pip. If you have, you know, some brokerages out there will convert your account to a mini. Okay, now you can trade mini lots on standard accounts, so that's different, but what we're talking about here is if the broker actually converts your account or says your account is a mini, which means 1.0 is a mini lot, not a standard lot. So if 1.0 on your broker is $1 per pip, then that's, you don't need to divide by 10, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. You might need to test some of this stuff or look at some of your recent trades. Make sure you know exactly how much 1.0 is for you. And if 1.0, like I say, is a dollar, then don't divide by 10. If it's $10, then you can divide by 10. Okay. Now, Glenn says 1.0 on mine is 10 cents a pip. So that's probably a, um, a nano account or a cent account. And so if that's the case then you will probably times this by 10, right? You just need to make sure what we're figuring out here is the lot size will be determined by the risk per pip. So if you come out and it says you should risk 20 cents per pip, Glenn, then you would trade 2.0 on you, for you. If you've got a mini account, you're going to trade, um, you know, 0.2. And uh, if you have a standard account, you get the idea. So let's just let's look at, look at an example now. So now that you see the flow of how it all works. Here's an example. If you have ten thousand dollars, and this you could have a thousand or a hundred, just you know, you can do the same calculations here, but we'll do ten thousand times, let's say we determined three percent risk we're going to take on a trade. So that would mean I can risk three hundred dollars. Um, that's how many dollars to risk I want to use, right? So we calculated that now, dollars per risk, three hundred dollars. Or dollars to risk. Okay, now we're going to take our, and determine our risk per pip. So that's going to be our dollars to risk, 300, divided by our stop loss, which I'm saying is 50 pips in this example. So it's telling me I can risk $6 per pip. So if I can risk $6 per pip, I need to look at my broker, like we're talking about here, determine how many dollars per pip 1.0 is, and make the calculations here. So for me, on a normal account, that's going to be 0.6 lots. Okay, because that's six minis, and a mini on most accounts is going to be $1. So six minis, 0.6, is going to be $6 per pip. Everybody following me? I know sometimes when it comes to the math of things, that a lot of you get a little bit lost, which is fine. I can show you some more examples. Um, but that's pretty straightforward. And, you know, the thing is we do have our tool PipStat that can figure this part out for you. I mean, it does a lot of other things, but it does this math part for you as well. So if you just type in your stop loss, um, it would figure out your lot size, and you'd already have your risk percent setting in, your, in the settings as well. Anybody need more examples, or is this pretty clear? Okay. So now, let's, let's look at this... Um, Let's look at this one more time with now that we've talked about we've talked about how the stop loss size doesn't matter if you're using this formula because we're going to account for it. Okay, so even if we change this right here and add it a zero, okay, if we added a zero right there, so if I had to have a five hundred pip stop, I'm not going to be risking more than you know, more than three hundred dollars. I can still do the math so that I'm still only risking $300, okay? Let's show you how this would work, okay? All I'm going to do is take that same $300 that I want to risk, and now I'm going to divide by 500, and it's really simple. That's just going to add a decimal there. If we did the formula or the math, that's going to be, I can risk now 60 cents per pip. 
So this, everything's just going to bump over. So now I'm going to trade 0.06 lots. Hopefully I didn't make a big mess there for you guys, but you get the idea. It didn't matter. It didn't matter how big my stop is. I just had to make some adjustments here so that I'm not, you know, I'm not, obviously, obviously I'm not going to go trade 0.6. Then I'm risking 10 times as much as I should have, and then, yeah, that would be a big problem. But I'm going to move everything over. I'm going to do the math again and figure out how many lots it is. As long as I follow this formula, I'm not going to have any problem with the big stop loss. Okay, but just keep in mind the the I guess the point, you know, the point about stop losses being big and not mattering. Um, the only time, like I say, that it's a big deal is if you are out there putting on big stops and small targets. That's where the uh, big stop loss can hurt you. Okay, so like I was saying a minute ago, you don't want to go out here on, let's go on to a 15 minute trade here. You know, you don't want to come into a trade like this. Let's say you thought the market was going to head down right there, you sold, and you said, well, I feel like it's going to shoot way up before it comes down, so you, you put this giant stop loss way out there, and you're thinking, yay, I prevented my stop loss there from getting hit. Okay, that's not that's not what you want to do. Okay, you don't want to get in here, you know, selling and trying to hit a target, say right there, and you think, oh well, I made money. This is not good, though. Let me let me show you some more examples. Of, I'll show you some more examples of this. But you know, here you are. If you if draw a couple lines on here, you can see this. You can see how much bigger your stop loss is to your target. And some people are trading this way. I've seen it a lot. See, a lot of traders think this is great because they're profiting on their trades. They're winning 80 or 90 percent of the time, but that doesn't mean anything. Okay, if you're out here risking, what do we have here? 42 pips to make 10. Okay, you're risking four times as much as you're winning. So if you win 80 percent of the time or 90, you might not even be making money because when you lose, you get nailed with a, a big loss, right? So you don't want to use big stops like this. It's okay to do, you know, to have big stops, but you want to make sure you're keeping your targets proportional. So I don't want to spend a lot of time getting into risk to reward ratio. That's what that topic's all about. Um, I know we've already talked about this in a previous training. You might just want to go to our blog and review that, or onto our YouTube channel. So you can go to tradewestforex.com forward slash blog. And that's where you can uh, you can scroll through and find some of the different trainings and things, or go on to YouTube. Just type in Trade West Forex or Mike Swanson, and you will find um, our channel there where you can re review some of these things. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's right, Jeff. Uh, I guess I, I I can expand on this for you. Okay. So Jeff's saying you'd be risking more pips, but not more money. Which that's true, exactly like I just said a minute ago. It's okay to have big stops because you can still risk that three hundred dollars. You know, you can do the math, risk the same amount of money. But the problem is, okay, this is for a different topic, but the problem is risk to reward ratio here, okay? So if you're out there risking, you know, ten you know, four times as much as you're gonna win, you've got to win a very high percentage of your trades. And a lot of people don't survive with this style of trading, okay? Because they get in there and they they hit a few targets and then they get wiped out. They wipe it all out from a loss. So I'm just suggesting. I mean, if this is working for you and you're making money in the from the long term on it, that's fine. But I'm just suggesting you should. Here's a better approach to this. Okay, let me show you here. What I would suggest you do is you know try to keep it around one to one or better. Take that loss. Okay, lose on take a loss on this trade. Wait for the market to turn up. If you feel like you were going to hold it anyway and it starts to turn back down, find a place to enter at that point. You know, once it starts to turn down, three signs of it, you know, failing to break higher, sell in right here. Now, when it comes down, and again, you can have a smaller stop loss on this one. Okay, put in a 12 or something pip stop, whatever it is. Now, when this trade starts to head down, you're going to make three or four to one profit. So look what happens here. Let me show you the difference. That first trade, you were risking you know, four to one. You're risking four dollars to make your one dollar. Okay, now on this time, this time we would have said, okay, we're risking one to one. We risked a dollar to make a dollar, so we lost a dollar. And then here we're going to risk a dollar to make four. 
we're going to make four. So we're going to be up three dollars to our one dollar that we risked. Okay, hopefully you're following me here. And the original example, you would have only made a dollar taking on a lot more risk. Okay. Yeah, that's fine, Jeff. Just wanted everybody to understand this because I, I've seen just so many traders that that continue to trade this way when there's a lot better way. They continue to put in these giant stops on the lower time frames, but when it comes to the higher time frames, they're afraid of it. They think, I, I don't want to have a 300 pip stop. <laughs> so it doesn't make a lot of sense, right? If you look at, let me go back over here at our daily and show you an example. Let's clean up all this stuff off the chart. Okay. If I'm over here and let's say I tried to buy in right here off this market structure low pattern, I bought the break, um, I don't put my stops at the swing low, right? Because what does the market do? It stops traders out just before going up and that's exactly what it would have done here. So my stop's not going to be determined that way. I'm not sure where it would have ended up. I'd have to go look at some things, but let's just say it's somewhere out here. Okay, so that's 123 pips. So if we go do the math, we could figure out you know, our calculations and determine you know, our 300 pip risk, our $300 risk, sorry. Divide that by the 123, you know, we're going to trade about you know, $1.50 per, uh, $1 per pip. So that's going to be 0.15 for me. So I'm going to put that in. I'm risking the same amount, the same $300. And then my target, you know, I'm going to shoot for 1 to 1 or 1 to 2. So you know at one to two would put us at a hundred or two hundred and forty pips, you know, somewhere up in here. We'd hit that target and we'd make six hundred dollars on the trade. So we'd make six percent on this trade, risking three percent. Now if I were to go back down to the fifteen minute, we can have the exact same example there. It doesn't matter if my stop's smaller, my risk is the same, right? So if I were in here buying right there, if I could get my stop really tight. Let's just say actually we bought right here. If I could get my stop at, let's say, 8 to 10 pips there, I mean, that's really tight. This is why the spread, you know, we've talked about this stuff in the past, how the spread eats into it and things. But if I could pull that off, I would want to have my target at about 16, you know, 1 to 2. If I could get it 1 to 2, that's the same exact result. I had, even though it was only 8 pips, some of you are thinking, man, I'd love to have an 8 pip stop. Well, it doesn't really mean anything. Eight pips, I'm still going to risk the $300. Okay, but like I told you earlier, you probably aren't going to be able to risk that 3%. That's probably going to be too much because you're going to have that little eight pip stop be hit a lot more often because the markets are much more volatile. They're going to move eight pips very easily in a few swings, right? So you're probably not going to risk 3%. You're going to probably have to risk 1%, maybe a little bit less. So you see the, you see the differences here? Hopefully some of these examples are helping this all make sense. And, uh, and this, is what, this is what you need to do. On, you know, with, with all of your trades, you need to come up with that risk initially. Figure out how much you want to risk per trade. Make the calculation. Before you even enter the trade, you have to do all these things. Otherwise, you're just asking for a lot of trouble because you know, if you get into a trade over here, let's say you thought support was going to hold over here, what are you going to do when the market just takes off? Are you just going to sit there and wait? And then when it comes up, think, okay, finally it's back up. Now I'm going to take my profit. You do not want to do that. Because here's the thing. You went through a 30 pip drawdown, which may not be a big deal, but one of these times it's going to keep going and going and going, and you're going to get nailed on a margin call or a big loss. So you need to have that plan in place. You need to just cut your losses. Keep your stops tighter. Take a loss. Wait for the market to come down. If you're going to buy again, you know, buy down here when it consolidates. And then when it comes back up, keep your stop tight again. When it comes back up, you're going to be making money overall. And instead of just having a tiny little gain, in, you know, where you took on a lot of risk. Do you guys see the benefits now of all of this? Do you see how this can help you guys? Do you see how just looking at the market a little bit differently? You know, we're keeping your stops tighter, using the same risk percent, 
is a much better approach than holding on through these big drawdowns and hoping the market's going to come back up. So I know that's kind of a tangent from what we're talking about today a little bit. We're talking a little bit now here about risk to reward and things, but I think they all kind of go together. And I know if you if you just take some time to you know go back and review some of your trades and you know go look at the market, see what you could have done differently. Apply some of these this technique and this formula and see how that would have changed things for you. So I'll answer some questions for you guys now. I already see a few coming in. Um, yeah, that's right, Keith. Fixed fractionals is just one way to calculate position size. There's many others. What are the advantages or disadvantages of fixed fractional versus some other ways of fixed ratio? Well, yeah, there's definitely there's a lot of different ways you can do this. One way you could do it is say for every thousand dollars I have in my account, I'm going to trade a micro lot, you know, or every ten thousand I'm going to trade a mini or two minis. So you can just sit there and wait till your account grows to that point. Okay, the reason that might be better than what we're showing you here is because if your trading is the style that you know you have these long streaks of winners and then um, and then you have a bigger losses at the end, then you don't want to be continuously compounding, you know, where you keep every trade, you increase it. Okay, if you have that style of system, then you probably do want to take the approach of wait till you hit a certain mark before you increase your lot size. But you can still start off by just saying, okay, well, if I have, you know, if I'm going to say 3% is my starting point, so I'll take my 10,000 and say I'm going to risk um, $300 all the way up until I grow the account to 15 grand. And then I will risk 450. Is that you follow me on that? Let me go back to this slide. Okay. So instead of you, you know, looking at it as okay, if I go to 10,000, if I go to 11 grand, now I'm going to risk 310, um, you know, or whatever. Three, I think that's uh, 330. Yeah. So instead of in, you know constantly increasing it, that can hurt those of you that you know, compound, compound, count, you know, keep bringing it up and up and up, and then you have a big loss. If you have that risk to reward ratio out there that's, that's you know, not, not very good, not better than one to one, then you might want to take this other approach. So you'd say, okay, I'm going to always risk $300 until I'm at 15 grand, or you set a certain mark. So that way you have to get there before you increase it, and that will help kind of smooth things out. So yeah, there's, that's just one way. I mean, there's lots of ways to do this. My uh, DDSMM formula from Forex Decoder does this all a completely different way. I mean, we're analyzing your your actual trades to determine, you know, try to determine when you're going to have a loss, basically, kind of trying to predict your patterns. And so we'll sometimes increase your loss after a loss. Other times we'll decrease it after a loss. I mean, it's it's all dependent on the individual trader. We've got Pipstat. Now, Pipstat uses this this concept that we're showing you here, but where it comes in uh, and helps a lot is it helps you find your best stop loss. So it'll say, you've been thinking you need a 100 pip stop. It might suggest you only need a 50 pip stop. And obviously, if you look at this formula, that smaller stop is going to help make you a lot more money. Okay, so let's see. Any other questions? Do you ever tighten your stops as the trade goes your way, or do you just leave it alone? No, that t tightening a stop is definitely a good strategy. So that doesn't really affect all of this stuff. What you don't want to be doing is widening your stop. Okay, the idea here is if you have to widen your stop, you what you obviously would need to do is close some of that trade, right? So let's say I needed to widen my stop a little bit here um, to 100 pips. I'd have to close off half my trade. So that way, if it goes to 100 pips, I don't lose twice as you know twice as much as I originally planned. Uh, and you might want to. We had we just had a webinar about trailing stops and tightening stops last. I think that was two weeks ago. So if you go on the blog, you can review that one. Um, so yeah, on cross pairs. Obviously, yeah, this, what I'm showing you here is based on dollar-based pairs where everything is in tens. 
um, if you go and trade a cross pair or a pair that's not, you know, something like the euro pound, where the uh, they use the second pair, you know, the pound currency value. So if it's like a dollar sixty um, on that on that quote, then that's what you pay per pip per mini. So I, I think we taught that in the 101 sessions in our Forex 101. Let me post that in here for you guys, for those of you that are looking for those some of those um, initial trainings that we did. Let's see. Okay, I'll just post the link in here. This will be a link to the replays. So I'll, I clicked on the link as well, so I'll show you what, where it takes you. Okay, um, we had, this is both, when we had Nate with us, he was teaching on some of these topics. Um, most of them actually, all the way till the end, I think I jumped on and did a few of them, but but you can see here there's all these replays so you can get into terminology, common mistakes, meta trader, trade preparation, trading plan, trading styles, choosing broker. So throughout these you'll find we where we teach about margin and calculations and things like that. So you can go on to that page, that link I just posted in the chat. Um, that's just tradewestforex.com forward slash webinar forward slash 4x101 as you can see right there that's where you'll find these replays okay well I, I hope this stuff helps you guys a lot um, I know it you know it just takes some time to watch these things and and take some notes but if you apply this stuff it can definitely make a, a world of difference in your trading so I really hope this uh, helps some of you you know save you save yourself from getting into those bad situations. I know if you uh, if you just stay disciplined and you know stick with your plan, follow your stop losses, don't move them around, determine your risk ahead of time. You're going to be, you know, you're going to be so much further ahead than 90% of the other traders out there who don't have any discipline and who are constantly having to refund their trading accounts because they're not, you know, they're not following a, you know, these rules and these things that keep you out of trouble. So. If you guys like this stuff, um, you've probably seen we're talking a little bit about 4x3D. Um, I've actually got a, a tool that I'm giving away for free for those that watch the, the replay of our webinars we just had last week. So if you want to learn more about this stuff and we get into a lot more details, we're starting our coaching this week, um, then uh, I'll post that link for you guys where you can sign up for the replay. We're going to be sending that out either today or tomorrow, so just look out for the email. But let me just give you guys the link. You guys can get that free bonus we're throwing in for for coming and watching the replay. We got a little trading tool. Um, let's see here. Okay. So there's that link. I'll leave that with you guys. And if you have any questions about this stuff, anything we've taught, um, you can go to our, any one of our web pages and find our contact information or just send us an email to info at tradewestforex.com. We'll probably have this week's session on Friday, so keep an eye out for that email. We'll have a brand new topic we'll put on the blog, and we'll, uh, we might be changing things up that we haven't decided for sure. We might, um, instead of having these these full webinars on a topic we might consolidate it into a video that we just post in the blog. So I don't know. I think it's, uh, we just noticed that most people seem to be watching the replays. But we'll, we'll let you know on that. We'll keep you informed. Once again, thanks everybody for coming. Uh, I really appreciate your time and uh, I hope you have a great week trading.